Video 5 Cloud Infrastructure In this video, we are going to take a look at how cloud solved many of the issues associated with traditional IT infrastructure. Cloud Infrastructure Enter the cloud. Cloud computing helps to eliminate a lot of the issues faced with traditional IT infrastructure because rather than owning all the IT layers, you use cloud provider for a lot of those layers. Is the responsibility of an experienced vendor like Amazon Web Services, Google, Microsoft Azure, Salesforce, etc. to maintain that infrastructure. In the previous video, we saw physical layer consisted of data center, servers, and networking equipment, and the drawbacks faced were huge upfront capital, physical limitations, and the need for good network engineers. The entire physical layer is replaced by cloud services like Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Google Compute Engine, Microsoft Azure Virtual Servers, and many more. So instead of you going and buying out all the servers, you go to, let's say, Amazon EC2, and with a few clicks or API call, you can request hundreds of servers provisioned for you. Within a few minutes, you will have your servers ready. You can connect to them and deploy your software on them, use them for simulation, testing, almost anything you can do with traditional servers. Why invest time and money into buying and maintaining all the hardware when you can, with a few clicks of a button, get your entire physical infrastructure on some of these providers? Regarding the issues of needing a lot of upfront capital, most of these servers are pay-per-use. If you want 1,000 servers today, you are charged per the hour. If you keep 1,000 servers running for one hour and release them after an hour, you are charged for 1,000 machine hours. With around 10 to 12 cents per machine hour, you would be paying around $100 to be able to use thousands of servers, which is nothing compared to traditional IT infrastructure costs. Also, in the cloud, there are no physical limitations. There's a famous quote by Newton, if I had seen further, it is by standing on the shoulder of giants. In the cloud, you are standing on the shoulder of giants like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. You may feel a thousand servers is a huge number of servers, but for these cloud providers, these numbers are not huge by any standard. Just to give you an idea of scale of Amazon's infrastructure, without giving very specific information, Amazon said that the amount of infrastructure that Amazon.com had when it was a $7 billion annual revenue e-commerce company, it adds that amount of infrastructure now every single day. If you are at the scale where you are challenging Amazon or Microsoft's capacity to provide you servers, then you have a good problem. Regarding having good network engineers, the servers provided to you are already connected and the entire networking configuration is already done for you so you can start using them. At the network layer, everything has been already done for you. The need for good networking engineers is drastically reduced. In the previous video, we saw that low-level hardware resources were how much storage, computation or bandwidth you actually have. These specific needs are now fulfilled by services like Amazon Simple Storage Service or Azure Blob Storage. Let's say you need a terabyte of storage. Storage is made available to you as a service with Amazon Simple Storage Service or Azure Blob Storage. The drawbacks faced where it was very hard to estimate the need in advance and hardware becoming cheaper every month. The issue of needing to estimate in advance is eliminated. Since services like S3 can scale from one byte to 100 terabytes instantly, there is no hard limit on what can be stored on S3. We don't really have to plan for storage and end up under provisioning or over provisioning. Service like S3 scales up instantly and is pay for what you use. With the issue of hardware becoming cheaper every month, this is no longer your problem. All cloud providers have cut through competition and the prices are actually going down for storage and CPU in the cloud. They have economics of scale and you get the benefit of that. 
data storage has become so cheap, in many cases, it is cheaper to store on cloud than on site. Low level software resources. In the previous video, we saw that the low level software resources layer, we have our database, web servers, and application servers. At this layer, we have services like Microsoft SQL Azure, Amazon Relational Database Service, and Google App Engine. The drawbacks faced were upfront licensing cost and the need for good software maintenance team. The issue of upfront licensing cost is removed. The licensing cost is included in the pricing so you pay for the hour. You are not bounded by contracts. You use the service for an hour, you pay only for that hour. Now, regarding the issue of needing a good software maintenance team, a lot of maintenance tasks are automatically taken care by the cloud providers. For example, when you use database services like Amazon Relational Database Service or Azure SQL, all the patching and the updating are taken care of by the service itself. And the amount of software maintenance required is drastically reduced. Now, even at the application layer, cloud provides many services. You can offload the application layer itself to cloud applications like Google Apps, Microsoft Exchange Online, and a million other apps. So, if you can directly use one of these apps for your requirement, then it negates the need to engage at the lower level. For example, if you need to deploy an Exchange server to receive and send emails for your company, one way will be to engage at the physical layer and ask Amazon or Microsoft Cloud to give a server and install Exchange yourself. Then you'll be responsible for keeping Microsoft Exchange running on it. But Google Apps and Microsoft Exchange Online provides these services as an application itself. So you can go to Google Apps and engage with Google at the application layer and reduce the amount of work you need to do to maintain the email infrastructure. We previously saw that the drawback faced at the application layer was that you were tightly coupled to your geographic location. When you use your own infrastructure to host applications, you were tightly coupled to your geographic location. But most of these cloud providers have data centers all over the world, which can serve the need of users located in different geographic locations. You can use any of these geographic regions and it's also not that difficult to move applications from one geographic region to another. Thus, you are not tightly coupled to one location. An example is that Amazon Web Services has infrastructure in North and South America, Europe and Asia, thus covering majority of the world. IT infrastructure, cloud advantage. So previously, we saw in the pyramid of effort how the lower levels of infrastructure takes away most of your time and effort which could have been spent on your applications. The cloud now replaces this black area. It takes care of everything beneath your application layer so that you can again spend all of your time, effort and creativity on your application. This is a huge win for any company that requires IT infrastructure hosting applications on the cloud. We previously saw that it was not easy to develop and maintain hosted applications. Now that we have an understanding of the cloud and the advantages that it brings, we will revisit benefits that we get from hosting applications on the cloud. Refer to the issues we discussed previously in the moving my accountant to online accountant section. Cloud infrastructure saves you a lot of time, energy and money. The kind of money you would need for an IT infrastructure is hugely reduced if you use cloud as all the cloud providers are pay per use. You don't need money upfront to buy hardware. The time and energy you would require to set up an IT infrastructure in cloud drastically reduced compared to traditional IT infrastructure. Less manpower is needed for maintaining the infrastructure. A 10 to 12 people company can manage infrastructures that can support millions of users. This can only be done if you use cloud infrastructure. This will be impossible 
with the physical infrastructure. The reason why you need less manpower to do the management is because most of the heavy lifting is done by the cloud provider. Developers are aided by many cloud services. Let's say as a developer of a desktop application, you have written code that stores data on the local hard disk. But for a hosted application, you have to write code with complicated logic that stores data on a centralized server. In case that is down, data should be stored in another location and so on. But if you are using cloud storage like S3, you have a single location whose chances of being down are rare. Cloud services like this help developer write good applications. Testers can have production size clusters to test. This is a huge advantage you get. For example, let's say you have your application deployed on a thousand node cluster. When you have a new version of your application, you have your testers test this version on a smaller 20 machine cluster. The biggest problem encountered is that it is really hard to figure out problems at such small scale. The version may work at a 20 node scale, but it might fail at the higher scale. But if you are on cloud, you can start a similar thousand node cluster, give it to your test team for a couple of hours or a day, and when they're done, you just release it. It is not very expensive compared to buying your own hardware. Business models are simpler and startup need less capital to go live. So imagine you need to sell a business plan to somebody. You ask him for a huge capital, tell him you need the money to buy hundreds of servers, hire people to maintain it, and maybe just maybe the application will be successful. Or you could ask him for a fraction of the capital, launch the application on 100 servers in the cloud. If the application grows and generates revenue, you will be self-sustaining. If the application fails, then you release the servers, learn from your mistakes, reiterate and redeploy the application. But the entire cost of hardware is not involved in your business plan anymore. The risk involved is much less. This is seen nowadays in Silicon Valley startups. What is seen nowadays in the Silicon Valley startups is that the amount of initial funding has gone down dramatically. Let's say when back in a day Google launched, they would have to buy the infrastructure as there was no cloud. They would have us for millions of dollars in funding. Today, if somebody wants to launch an application that competes with Google, they would potentially launch for much less. They just host their application on Amazon, Microsoft, or even Google's own infrastructure. In this video, we saw how cloud nullifies each of the issues faced at each layer of traditional IT infrastructure and allows you to focus your time and effort on the creativity of your application. In the next video, we'll take a look at some of the key attributes of cloud computing.